Welcome to this overview of PXF Ring Light. So here I've made myself a little scene in Nuke. I've brought myself some geometry using Read Geo. I've created a couple spheres and a card and so on. Put everything into a scene and I've made sure that every item has shaders. For example, my statue here has a diffuse shader and a specular shader. My chrome ball has a diffuse shader and a reflection shader and so on. So everything has shaders applied to it. Everything's going into a scene and being fed into a scanline render. If I look at the result of my scanline render, everything is black because I don't have any lights in my scene. So let's bring in a PXF ring light and put it in the scene. So everything's pretty bright. I need to be able to uh, move and scale my ring light. So for that, I'm going to need an axis. And I'm going to connect it to the axis input of my ring light. And I can look at my scene in the 3D view. When there's a lot of lights in the scene, uh, the 3D viewer is not really happy. So I'm going to switch to wireframe mode. For that, I'm going to make sure my mouse is over my viewer. Push S on my keyboard and go to the viewer preferences in the 3D tab. Set my display to wireframe. And now I can have a look at my ring light. And the ring light is a donut with a bunch of lights around it. We can show or hide the light icons using the display uh, knob here in the light rig tab. So I can enable and disable my icons. Now I can see my ring light and I can adjust it with the rest of my scene. So it's way too small. I'm going to scale it up. Here we go. So now it's around my subjects and I'm going to look at my scanline render through the soft clip to make the highlights a bit nicer to look at. And this is still too bright. I'm going to go back to my ring, ring light, go in the color tab and bring the intensity down to 50. Here we go. So this is looking promising. However, I don't see any reflections and I don't see any shadows. This is because I'm limited by the scanline render node. So instead of rendering my scene with a scanline render, I'm going to render with a ray render. Ray render is the built-in ray tracer for Nuke. So that's included in Nuke and it replaces scanline render. So I'm going to use ray render instead. Same thing through a soft clip. And now I can see reflections on my uh, chrome ball and I can see shadows on the ground. Uh, you can see that the shadows are pretty rough here. This is because I don't have enough lights in my light rig. Let's move the lights a little bit. Here we go. So what's happening right now is I have about, let's bring the icons back. So what's happening right now is I have 10 lights in my rig and I see 10 shadows on the ground. If I want more shadows to make it look like one continuous soft shadows, I can add lights in the rig. So instead of having 16 lights, I'm going to have 64, for example. And you can see now the shadows look softer. So now I have more lights in my rig. Let's go back to 16 for demo purposes. By default, the lights are omnidirectional, meaning that they're shining all around. You can make them directional by turning on the directional knob in the ring light. And now they're only going to shine one way. Right now they are shining downwards. You can see that in the 3D view. If you look, there's little icons showing you the direction of the lights. And we can change a direction using the direction knob and make the lights shine up or inwards or down or outwards. So if I set the direction, for example, to 90 degrees or 120 degrees, then they're going to shine inwards towards the heads of the characters like so. If I make the direction 180, the lights are pointing straight up and so on. If you want to adjust the feathering of the light cutoff, you can uh, adjust the scale and the penumbra angle. So let's rotate our light a little bit to make it easier to see. 
here we go so if we want to make this transition softer we would adjust the scale so if you lower the scale let's say to 0.1 now you have a softer transition if you make the scale bigger then you can have a really sharp transition let's bring down our scale down to 0.1 and you can adjust the penumbra angle. So if I make the penumbra angle smaller, I'm actually, it's, that's a point downwards to make it easier to see. So now I'm shining on the ground. If I make this really small, I'm gonna have little spotlights. So uh, the, the cone is really, really small. So I'm shining a bunch of little spotlights on the ground. And if I change my direction to, let's say, 100 degrees then all those little spotlights are shining on my characters if i make the penumbra angle bigger then i'm shining wider uh, so this is pretty much a feather for the light cone and this is how wide or narrow is the light cone okay now let's look at shadow mode so shadow mode uh, determines whether the shadows are applied from the geometry or from the texture of the object so here i have a texture with some transparency shadow mode is set to solid meaning that the entire geometry is casting a shadow if i set it to full alpha then the transparent bits in the uh, texture will let the light shine through so now i the texture is uh, used for the shadows if i set it to solid then the geometry is used for the shadows uh, use full alpha uh, with uh, ray render of course clipped alpha is for scanline render and solid is for faster rendering we can change the color of the light of course in the color tab so you can make the light any color you want you can change the intensity, make the light brighter or darker. You can change the fall off. So if you set it to no fall off, then distance will have no impact on the brightness. So of course we need to compensate by bringing down the intensity a lot. Here we go. So now, no matter how far or close to the light the object is, it will be lit the same. If you set it to linear, then something that's twice the distance will be half the intensity. And so on. We have other modes. We've got quadratic, which is more aggressive, and cubic, which is the most realistic. And of course, if you have a cubic uh, fall off, you need to have a pretty high intensity. If your scene is very big and your objects are really far from your light source, you need to have a really high intensity when you have a cubic fall off. The emissive object is the actual donut. You can turn that off by disabling the emissive object here. This will affect whether or not the emissive object is seen by the camera and whether you can see it in reflective objects as well. By default, the, uh, the emissive object is transparent because if it's not and you're uh, shadow mode is set to full alpha the light will not escape the inside of the geometry because the lights are actually inside the geometry so by default the emissive object is transparent if you are set to solid shadow mode you can turn off transparent if you want color will adjust the color of the uh, emissive object so you can change that independently without affecting the light you can change the intensity of the emissive object make it brighter or darker again without affecting the light you can change the radius to make your donut a bit more chunky if you want and you can adjust the number of segments so really there is no donut uh, primitive in nuke so it's just a bunch of cylinders so if you want a more geometric uh, shape you can set it to let's say seven segments and now it looks like a more geometric shape or if you want it to be smoother and look like a real circle you can set more segments and the columns is just the resolution of the cylinders so if we turn off the lights here you can see uh, the column adjustment here we go so if you want it to really be uh, smooth you can add more resolution to it so there you go. That was an overview of PXF Ring Light. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.